Let's use this as an example to see how mesh current techniques can be used to identify or to calculate, say, the voltage across that um, parallel combination of resistors. In order to do that, we're going to need to know the current flowing through either the 15 ohm or the 12 ohm, and then the voltage across that will be that current times the resistance. So, let's get started here. Our first step is to identify the meshes. As you can see, we have three meshes, one here, this one in the center, and then one there also. Now, let's define mesh currents in each of those meshes. We'll call this I1. We'll call this one here I2. And call this mesh current right there I3. Now, let's look first of all at that left-hand mesh. It's interesting here. We have an independent current source of 100 milliamps flowing in that branch. Well, that branch current happens to be the same as this mesh current that we've identified, I1. Thus, we know right now, without writing anything else, that I1 is equal to 100 milliamps or 0.1 amps. That gives us one of our equations also. All right, let's look at the center mesh here. Starting at that point, we've got 60 ohms times... I2 minus I1. Now we could certainly say minus 0.1 because we know what I1 is, but let's just go ahead and write two additional equations in terms of I1, I2, and I3, so we'll have a system of three equations and three unknowns, and we can solve it that way. So we'll have 60 times I2 minus I1 plus, coming across here, 30 times I2. Ah, now we have a voltage source here. We're going from minus to plus. That represents a voltage increase. Therefore, it'll be a minus 10 volts. Coming on down this 15 ohm resistor, we'll have plus 15 times the current in that 15 ohm resistor, where the current is referenced going down, because that's the direction we're going. The current going down is I2 minus I3. And that brings us back to where we started, so the sum of those terms equals zero. And then finally, the going around the, the right-hand mesh, we have 15 times I3 minus I2 plus 12 times just I3 equals zero. That gives us three equations with three unknowns. I've already pointed out that we know what I1 is. But let's just go ahead and write them, uh, con uh, factoring out the common or combining common terms and factoring out our mesh current variables. So starting with the top equation, we have I1 equals 0.1. The second equation, factoring out I1, we're left with uh, we've only got one I1 term. It's a negative in front of it with a 60, so it'll be a minus 60 plus I2, we have three I2 terms. We've got 60 plus 30 plus 15. 60 plus 30 plus 15. And then for I3, we have uh, just one I3 term. It's got a minus sign being multiplied by 15, so minus 15. And then we've got this constant voltage here of a minus 10 that we bring to the other side as a plus 10. So there's our second equation with the terms combined. Now the third equation. The third equation has no I1 terms, so let's put an I1 with a 0 there to hold the place, plus I2 times a negative 15, plus I3 times... 15 plus 12, and the sum of those terms must equal 0. And there again are our three equations and three unknowns. Now let's just go ahead and calculate these. Let's see, this is going to be um, 60 plus 30 is 90 plus 15 is 105. And then this here is 15 plus 12 is 27. 
we can go ahead and plug that into our calculator either using the solve button or, or the solve uh, facility or matrix algebra and when we do that we find that I1 is equal to, we already knew what I1 was, 100 milliamps or 0.1 amps. I2 is equal to 0.1655 amps. And I3 is equal to 0 0.092 amps. But we weren't asked to determine what the currents were. We were asked to find what V out is. So now we can say that V out is equal to 12 times the current flowing through that, which is our mesh current I3. So 12 I3, and that's going to 12 times 0 0.092, and that equals 1.104 uh, volts. We could determine any other voltage or current that we wanted to. For example, what is the current flowing down through that 60 ohm resistor? Let's call it I sub 60. Well, I sub 60 is just going to be I1 minus I2, or 0.1 minus 0.1655. 5 amps. Of course, that then equals negative 0.0655 amps.